Let's talk about how we can rewrite history in a Git repository using a few different commands. And these commands will help us in a variety of different scenarios. Before we can actually get into discussing this though, there's something really important we need to be reminded of, which is you really do not want to change anything about a commit that has been pushed to a shared repository. So you don't want to change a shared history, something that uh, any, any history that already exists on somebody else's machine or on some other service or system, uh, you really don't want to change the commits that have already been shared with others. And the reason for that is because the commands we're going to look at today can modify a commit's history, meaning you could actually change a commit that someone else already has, and it would appear as though you deleted it. Uh, and this can lead to issues and, and headaches down the road. So your rule of thumb here is, you really only want to consider doing what we're about to look at today on commits that are local to you that you really have not pushed and shared with anybody else. So you never want to modify somebody else's commits. You should really only be modifying yours unless you're very, very confident in what you're doing and know that you can work your way out of a bind if, if you run into one. Uh, but generally, if you're only modifying commits that you haven't pushed anywhere that are only local to you, you should be totally fine with anything we're doing today. The reason for this is because when someone else goes to pull down changes, if, you've, if you modify a history and you push those, that modification up and do it in a forceful way that causes the shared repository to, to recreate your actions, it can really cause some headaches for people who try and pull at the point that they want to catch their repositories up to date. And working everyone's repositories out of this state on a, on a team of you know, two or three or four or more people uh, can get really tedious and you do run the risk of losing work uh, if, you're, if you're really uncareful about what you're doing here. And so again, what we're going to look at today are a few commands that uh, are very useful, but are also kind of dangerous in ways that other Git commands really just aren't. For the most part, remember, uh, Git goes out of its way to avoid you putting you in a position where you could lose work. The, the whole purpose of Git is the exact opposite. It's to preserve a history of your work. And so these commands are special in that we are changing history uh, and there are scenarios where you really want to be able to do this because it's kind of silly to create extra commits or to create extra merge commits. Uh, and so these are some strategies we can use to avoid doing so in cases where uh, you've made something simple. You, you want to make a simple change to something that you haven't shared with anybody else yet. So the first one I want to look at is amending a commit. And so the idea here is imagine you've just made a commit, you've pressed enter and you've, you've set the message of this commit and oh you want to do something like change the last commits message you didn't write a descriptive enough message and you just want to change the message of it well turns out this is a very straightforward simple thing to do uh, that's commonly done you can amend the very last commit you just made using the amend flag of the git commit subcommand uh, and so there are two ways of going about this. One, if you wanted to edit that commit in your text editor, you can do so uh, with the very first command, git commit dash dash amend. Or if you just had a one-liner commit message that you wanted to change it to and rewrite it, uh, you could do so with uh, the, the second command. So let's actually take a look at this really quickly. And uh, we're going to uh, be in a, an example repository here that I've set up. Uh, again, if you want to practice with this, my, I would encourage you to set up a repository that's your own, make a few commits to it, make a branch, make a few commits to that branch, uh, and put yourself in a position that you can play around with some of these commands. Since these are commands that you only want to do on unpushed changes, it doesn't make sense to set up a practice repo here. Uh, I would encourage you to set up one on your own. So in the repository that we're going to look at, there are two branches that I've set up. We've got our master branch and some new feature we're working on as another branch. If I inspect the log of this repository and use the command uh, options to show it uh, all commit messages on one line and to show this in a graph format and to graph all branches of this repository, what we see is uh, 
these two branches each have uh, a couple commits and on the master branch we see that we just made improvements to the second feature right? so what are the features we're working with here well in this simple demo repository uh, i've only got one file that's this readme file and if i look at it we can see that it has three features on the master branch that are made and these are just bullet points in a text file uh, so this is a, a pretty silly little demo uh, but if we had just made changes to the second feature and uh, we wanted to say maybe change the commit message of the last commit we can see that the last commits uh, message was improvements to the second feature so i'm going to amend this commit and i'll do so with the first option here uh, which is to throw me into this text editor and so now i'm editing my commit message the text i see at the top that isn't preceded by the hash is what i can is what will become the commit message so improvements to the second feature uh, and i'm going to go ahead and write that out and exit and so now if i actually look at my history i want to point out two things uh, and i'm, all, I'm only going to show uh, the very last commit so the first thing I want to point out is notice we've changed the commit message here. So we've amended this commit. Previously, it was improvements to the second feature. Now it's improvements to the second feature with three exclamation points. Uh, the other thing that I want you to notice here is that the ID of this commit has changed. And this is going to be something that you hear me say a few times uh, across the content of this video. And the reason for that is remember the ID is actually a hash or a an encrypted uh, one-way representation of uh, all of the contents of a commit and so if we change the contents of a commit and in the contents of a commit include the commits message and the commits author as well as the change of the actual files then we are changing the id of that commit as well and this is where uh, some of the problems that you can run into if you try and push a modified history will, will, will come from like you've actually made a change the ids of commits that you've modified in the past All right so another way if we wanted to just demo that second me method of amending a commit we could use the dash m flag just like we can uh, in the normal git commit uh, command and say uh, let's move it back to where it was improvements to the to second feature okay and you'll notice that because i th this has a different timestamp, even though this has the exact same commit message we've because we've changed history there's going to be a different timestamp associated with when this commit was last modified or changed uh, it has also a different id as it did previously so if you want to change if you if you've just made a commit and you think oh that wasn't as good of a message as i want to write i could write a new message and and it would be an improved uh a more descriptive message for my commit you can do so very easily by amending your last commit another common thing that you might want to do is you accidentally forget to stage a file or some change that you wanted to be included as part of your last commit so to amend a commit to include a change that you had not uh, staged prior to making your last commit all you need to do is add that file to your stage and then run the git commit amend and it will take anything that's on the stage and attempt to uh, amend your previous commit with that data there's another flag you can use here the no edit flag that will just reuse whatever your last git commit message was so that this happens all in one step and i'll demo this really quickly so let's imagine uh, we had some file named uh, another file and it has some content if i add another file to staging and i check my status we'll see that we've we've added this file to staging and if I really meant for this file to actually be a part of the last commit that I just made, and, and typically you're not making a new file after you make a commit and then realizing you want to add it, uh, this would be a file that you just forgot to stage in most uh, circumstances. What you do is git commit amend. And if we use this no edit flag, 
what we'll see happens is uh, we, uh, as part of our last commit, we've now added this file to it. So if we looked uh, at our log, we would once again see there's the last commit was improvements to the second feature. It's not like we've uh, created a brand new commit. We still have on the master branch uh, two commits since the in initial commit. Uh, and that was the improvements to the second feature one. So we've just added a file to a commit we had previously made and had forgotten to stage. If we wanted to do both of those things at the same time, so now let's say them another file, uh, some content, whoops, meant to include this too. And I once again add another file. Let's say that's what we really meant to be in that very last commit that we had just made. I could check my status. We see that, okay, this is, this is staged. And I'm going to do that get commit amend one more time. Uh, this time I'm not going to use that no edit flag just to show you the, the only purpose of no edit is saying you don't want to edit the, uh, the message. But if you don't use that flag, you'll see we're once again thrown into an editor. And the same rules apply to what we had just looked at. If you wanted to change the get commit message, improvements to the second feature, including a new file. If we wanted to actually change the git commit message here. So I've just saved that file, I've written it out. And now if I go one last time, check my, my commit log, we see that, okay, uh, we still have only uh, the, this one extra commit after improvements to the first feature, it's improvements to the second feature, including a new file. And now that commit includes the latest changes that I just made. So there are scenarios where if you find yourself in a position where you've just made a commit and you really wish that you had uh, included some other change or used some different message, you can do so uh, with the amend flag. As I mentioned, anytime you make a change to a commit, some of its properties are bound to change, like the timestamp or the message or the contents of the commit itself. That generates a new hash ID. And this changing of an ID of a commit is what leads to things going array, uh, astray when you push and pull from a shared repository and you, and you make changes to a shared history. So again, you really only want to consider doing an amend to a commit that you have not yet pushed or shared with anybody else.